November 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Daniel chapter 9 from the Old Testament. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, who was of Median descent and who had been appointed king over the Babylonian Empire, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, came to understand from the sacred books that according to the word of the Lord disclosed to the prophet Jeremiah, the years for the fulfilling of the desolation of Jerusalem were seventy in number. So I turned my attention to the Lord God to implore him by prayer and request with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God, confessing in this way, O Lord, great and awesome God, who is faithful to his covenant with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned. We have done what is wrong and wicked. We have rebelled by turning away from your commandments and standards. We have not paid attention to your servants, the prophets, who spoke by your authority to our kings, our leaders, and our ancestors, and to all the inhabitants of the land as well. You are righteous, O Lord, but we are humiliated this day, the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far away in all the countries in which you have scattered them, because they have behaved unfaithfully toward you. O Lord, we have been humiliated, our kings, our leaders, and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. Yet the Lord our God is compassionate and forgiving even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God by living according to his laws that he set before us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has broken your law and turned away by not obeying you. Therefore you have poured out on us the judgment solemnly threatened in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against you. He has carried out his threats against us and our rulers who were over us by bringing great calamity on us. What has happened to Jerusalem has never been equaled under all heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, so all this calamity has come on us. Still we have not tried to pacify the Lord, our God, by turning back from our sin and by seeking wisdom from your reliable moral standards. The Lord was mindful of the calamity and he brought it on us. For the Lord our God is just in all he has done, and we have not obeyed him. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with great power and made a name for yourself that is remembered to this day, we have sinned and behaved wickedly. O Lord, according to all your justice, please turn your raging anger away from your city Jerusalem, your holy mountain. For due to our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors, Jerusalem and your people are mocked by all our neighbors. So now, our God, accept the prayer and request of your servant and show favor to your devastated sanctuary for your own sake. Listen attentively, my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look on our desolated ruins and the city called by your name. For it is not because of our own righteous deeds that we are praying to you but because your compassion is abundant. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, pay attention and act. Don't delay for your own sake, O my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. While I was still speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my request before the Lord, my God, concerning his holy mountain, Yes, while I was still praying, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen previously in a vision, was approaching me in my state of extreme weariness, around the time of the evening offering. He spoke with me, instructing me as follows, Daniel, I have now come to impart understanding to you. At the beginning of your request, a message went out, and I have come to convey it to you, for you are of great value in God's sight. Therefore, consider the message and understand the vision. Seventy weeks have been determined concerning your people and your holy city to put an end to rebellion, to bring sin to completion, to atone for iniquity, to bring in perpetual righteousness, 
to seal up the prophetic vision and to anoint a most holy place. So know and understand from the issuing of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until an anointed one, a prince, arrives, there will be a period of seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will again be built with plaza and moat, but in distressful times. Now after the 62 weeks, an anointed one will be cut off and have nothing. As for the city and the sanctuary, the people of the coming prince will destroy them. But his end will come speedily like a flood. Until the end of the war that has been decreed, there will be destruction. He will confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of that week, he will bring sacrifices and offerings to a halt. On the wing of abominations will come one who destroys, until the decreed end is poured out on the one who destroys. God, it's amazing to think that in all actuality, that Daniel was a human being just like us. You know, we, we hear these stories so often that they almost become legends rather than and folk tales rather than real people and you know this opens up with Daniel reading Jeremiah just like we read Jeremiah not too long ago uh, and it's just incredible to think you know back then they were reading what had been written right about those 70 years in captivity uh, the exile period the desolation of Jerusalem and Daniel realized that that prophecy was starting to come to an end that they were getting close to the end of the 70 years and he says this amazing beautiful prayer to you of course first and foremost confessing sins begging forgiveness and then asking you for something and I think at least for me for such a long time I got prayer wrong <laughs> first and foremost I didn't understand that it was my way of communicating with you in all honesty first and foremost uh, I thought prayer was this thing you had to say in a certain way in certain words in a certain order and you had to be a certain person in order for you to listen and I quickly learned that that wasn't the case uh, and then prayer turned into a list of almost like a Christmas list of things I wanted um, as though you were a fulfiller of dreams rather than my Lord and my God. Uh, and then slowly I started to learn what prayer actually is. That it is this crazy awesome way that you allow us to communicate with you. That, that right now I am truly talking to God. Like that's just incredible when you stop and think about what prayer really is. That you're actually listening to my words right now and I'm actually talking to you and for people to make prayer any less than that amazing experience that we are actually speaking to God makes it something that isn't prayer so that was what Daniel was doing out of incredible awe and respect of realizing who he was talking to uh, he humbly came before you and begged forgiveness for the sins of his nation and then after he had done that he asked for them to be taken out of captivity and returned to their home but here's another piece that I used to get wrong all the time is I would ask for things that sounded good <laughs> it sounds really good hey God forgive us we're coming to the end of our 70 years can you send us back home uh, kind of seems to be all good uh, I've asked for forgiveness of of the sins of myself and 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 my family around me my nation around me uh, I know it's a prophecy uh, I'm doing everything right but the piece we miss the big piece we miss in prayer is we have to be in your will when we're requesting those things if we're outside of your will you're never going to do them <laughs> you promise in the bible to fulfill anything we ask in your name and and we get that wrong so often in your name means that it is something that glorifies you 
either then, in the future, some way it will be glorifying to you. And Daniel knew this. He repeatedly said throughout his prayer, please do this, not for us, but because you are a compassionate God and it is for your glory. He says that more than one time. And if we do pray in your will, then you will give us the desires of our heart. You will give us anything we ask in your name because it is your will. Sometimes prayer to me is a battle of wills. <laughs> what I want versus your will. And God, I need to learn from Daniel how to humble myself when coming before you of realizing you have allowed me an opportunity to have a conversation with you, with the Almighty God who allows the sun to rise in the morning and the stars to come out at night. You provide me an opportunity to talk to you. And first and foremost, I had better be humble about it. Second, to stand before you and not confess my sins. That better be first and foremost in my mind. And then finally, whatever I'm bringing to you had better be in your will and for your glory. That's why a lot of times you'll hear me say in my prayers, if this is your will and in your time, can we please do such and such? And sometimes I won't even ask for specific things. I will just ask that your will be done. I don't know why we have such a hard time with putting you above us, God. You, you obviously deserve it. You reign sovereign over not only all of us, but everything in the worlds of worlds. You have created us. You have given us life. You have given us your only son. You have given us freedom and eternal life. And yet we still want our will to be above your will. And then we get upset when we say prayers aren't answered. <laughs> prayers are always answered. You always answer our prayers. Usually the answer is yes, no, or maybe, as I've learned. <laughs> and it's always yes. If I'm praying something that is in your will, God. God, allow our hearts to be set right with the right priorities. When we come to you and talk to you, allow our hearts to be humbled of who we are talking to, who our words are going to. That is not a one-way intercom with a wish list of things that we want, but we are to be humble when we talk to you. Acknowledging your presence, your sovereignty, your control, and turning everything over to you, God. God, if it is your will to bless what we've read today and allow it to seep into the hearts and the minds and the lives of the people who listen to this video, then God, I beg that of you. Allow their lives to be changed by these words in small ways and big ways and ways that they can share with other people. God, allow us to learn how to speak to you while watching the people you've put in the Bible, watching how they interact with you. And finally, God, I thank you for your word. It teaches us so much. I'm pretty sure I can read the Bible for the rest of my life and not even capture 10% of what I could potentially learn from everything that you've included in this word to us. God, thank you for giving us a language to talk to you in, a way to communicate so that all the people in the world have an opportunity to speak to you. It's just crazy awesome, God. I pray all of this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.